Our next speaker uh, is uh, Professor Adrian Yarena, professor at the University Hospital of Extremadura in Spain. And Professor Yarena will be talking about the MEDEA project and personalized medicine initiatives uh, in Extremadura. So, Adrian, the floor is yours. Thank you to the organizers for inviting me to, to share with you our current initiative in Extremadura about uh, the implementation of a personalized medicine program based on pharmacogenetics. So next slide, please. OK, this is Extremadura. I think we fulfill all the conditions that has, has been taken for this webinar. We are a unpopulated a region in the far west of the peninsula. In fact, uh, you know, ne next slide, please. We are close to the border with Portugal, and you can see here a few data. The number of inhabitants that we have is around 1.1 million. If you compare with Belgium, which is 11 million. Uh, the, the density of population that we have here is around 25 inhabitants per square kilometer, but for instance, taking Belgium as an example, is 300. Therefore, we're an extremely unpopulated place with two major cities, which is Cáceres and Badajoz, that covers more, more or less 30% of the population. So next one. So that next one, please. Yeah, thank you. Next one. Okay, this is those are some figures about the, the characteristics of the healthcare system. Have you, most of you know in Spain, we have an autonomous community system working and each region or community is running their own in their own way the healthcare under certain coordination rules. Our healthcare is called Servicio Extremeño de Salud, simply is uh, healthcare from Extremadura. So if you take the total budget of the community, which is around 6.5 million euros for healthcare, we dedicate 1.8 million and as much as 500 million euros are going directly to direct cost. So next one, please. As professor of clinical pharmacology, of course, this worries me a lot because as you can see here in the first slide, in the first line in 2015, we spend as much as 300 million euros for 1 million inhabitants a year directly in drugs, but in 2020, the budget for 21, we will spend as much as almost 500 million. It means in five years, it's not double, but the amount of money that will be spent on drugs is almost 200 million euros more. And of course, the direct cost is an issue, but what really worries me as a physician working in clinical pharmacology is the indirect cost for the healthcare system. If you calculate that around 20% of the people coming daily to the emergency rooms are coming due to ADRs, adverse uh, drug reactions connected to the to the drugs. I think we have a huge amount of visits going to, you, you can see here, almost 30 million visits to primary care, but almost half million of emergencies uh, coming to, to, to the hospitals. Therefore, as much as drugs are we are using, the problem is that there is a lot of pressure. Sorry, there is a lot of pressure in the in the healthcare issue. Next one. So the problem is that we are creating a new problem in the healthcare, which is the ADRs caused to the overuse of of drugs at the moment. This is our healthcare. It comes probably a little bit late. This is a. I call the remote paradise in Europe. Don't tell too much around because so far we are living quite nicely here. There is uh, eight, uh, eight health areas, as you can see here. Each of them has a, a hospital with two my, uh, major hospitals. One here, I don't know if you can see my point, which is there are two university hospitals. One is in Cáceres and another in Badajoz. And almost, uh, uh, as you can see at the bottom of the of the screen, 99% of the population is covered by the public healthcare system. This is one of the advantages for any program that you can run here. The just one system run almost 99% of the population. 
Moreover, the population doesn't move here. I mean, people are living quite with not too many people coming in or, or going out from the region. And the population is quite stable. And in terms of healthcare, I think that there's no major issues concerning diseases. Next one. Yeah, next one, please. OK, why to do personalized medicine or pharmacogenomics in the region? This is a question after being working for more than 35 years in clinical pharmacology and pharmacogenetics. People ask me all the time why is it still research or not? And the best argument, argument and I'm using most of the time is regulations. Uh, regular doctors work in daily practice. This is an argument that they, they understand quite well. If there's an obligation or con connected to liability due to re recommendation of good practice, they understand that very well. As most of you know, probably the European Medicine Agency opened up uh, a committee, the Pharmacogenomics Working Party, which is in charge of recommending biomarkers, genetic biomarkers and other for to increase the quality of drug prescription. I'm joined and I was elected in this party in 2010. I've been there for more than 11 years. Uh, you can see here how in these slides on the right part, you can see the number of times or number of biomarkers that we have been recommending to the CHMP, the, 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 the Medical Product uh, Committee of the EMA. The number of times that we have been recommending a biomarker when our drug has been authori authorized for the European market. So next one. Around the conclusion is around 35 to 40 percent of the drugs that we are um, we are authorized to the central system in Europe contain a biomarker in their recommendation. But moreover, we have a lot of uh, a lot of some guidelines that are that are coming recommending the use of pharmacogenomics in the daily clinical practice. This one is about pharmacovigilance, but there are so many other. Next one. In this framework, next one, please. Yeah, we have been asked from the European, uh, from the Spanish Medical Agency to evaluate how many times about a genetic biomarker is included in a, in a, in a drug label, in a SMPC, uh, according to the jargon. Here, you see the, these groups, A, B, C, D, etc. This, those are the ATC group. Um, uh, and you can see in, in red is marked when a biomarker, a genetic biomarker is recommended. In blue if is marked if it's not recommended. So those six groups representing the 92% of all prescriptions, specifically in primary care. And you can see how in most of the groups, the number of drugs that contains a genetic biomarker in the label is higher than the times in, in which there is no genetic biomarker recommended. So the final message is so far, more than 50% of the drugs commonly used in the Spanish market at the moment uh, include uh, gen the use of the genetic biomarker in the in the label in the drug label. Of course, in different level of recommendations, not all of them are obliged. Some of them are just simply recommended. Next one. So from these slides, I mean, this is a, a strong argument. Now there is a need to implement uh, clinical ph ph pharmacogenetics and personalized medicine for the healthcare. Is a need based on on the, on the quality of healthcare, but moreover, there is a somehow called political initiative. I'm currently the president of the Spanish Society of Pharmacogenomics and Personalized Medicine, and before from the Spanish Society of uh, Vice President of the Spanish Society of Clinical Pharmacology. And by the action of different societies, we end up in the Spanish Senate with this recommendation that you can see here. Sorry, it's in Spanish, but the next one. And we end up this next one, a recommendation from the Spanish Senate, uh, Senate, Senate in, the, in, the, in the previous one, was stating that the Spanish Senate recommend to implement uh, drug pharmacogenetics um, um, and personalized medicine in the public health care. In this framework, there are different initiatives in Spain. 
Uh, and the most, I mean, the most relevant one you can see here in Galicia. Galicia is mostly focused in, in genetic analysis. There is a huge uh, center, the, the, La Fundación Pública de Medicina Genómica, led by Professor Ángel Carracedo, doing quite well from the whole region. Navarra is going deep in uh, genetic analysis, in se sequencing. The situation in Catalonia is a little bit dispersed. There are different small initiatives here and there, mostly connected to certain therapeutic groups. Andalusia in the south is mostly, in general, I'm of course talking generally, is mostly uh, related, uh, uh, working in bioinformatics, doing some liquid bio biopsy and this type of stuff. And here in Extremadura, this uh, rural area where we are now, in this framework, we decide to concentrate in, in, in the development of a project that will be implemented for the whole community based on patient. Next one. What is the major characteristics that we will include? We have a next, we have a new frame, framework here. The Spanish government decides uh, a few months ago to open up a framework of an a Spanish network personalized medicine, which call is, is a pact initiative. And we have a, a going on initiative that are taking together Extremadura, Galicia, Castilla y León, Salamanca, exactly, Madrid, and, and Valencia to develop a system to implement clinical pharmacogenetics into the in the national health care. We are, we are running an initiative connecting all of these different regional initiatives. Next one, please. In this framework, we decide to design uh, a Extremadura initiative that is here started in as far as, well, th the 13th of March of, um, of 2013, it was the first time that we were discussing with the Spanish government about the need of develop, uh, to develop a pilot initiative in this rural region. Why? As I mentioned before, because we are just we have just one healthcare system. Second, because our population is very stable. People are always the same. Families don't move too much. Third, because the ethnicity of our population is very representative of the rest of Europe. And fourth, because we have an electronic medical record system developed in 2006 that include every subject, both hospital and primary care in this in the same clinical record. Therefore, we can develop a model that can be evaluated because I think this is a major issue that we need to evaluate in terms of health technology assessment implementation of clinical pharmacogenetics in the healthcare. Next one. Next, yeah. So this is the major differences of our model. One, we are patient center. What, what, what means that? If you go around and see most of the initiatives uh, which are supported by drug companies or different consortium in Europe, different recommendations, even regulation, is most of the time given for a drug. But in clinical practice, the patients are taking more than one drug. Therefore, we need to take the recommendations and to use in the real life conditions during drug polytherapy. Second problem, if, when you check most of the programs, they are just considering genetic factors. And although as a scientist and working the relevance of genetic factors, at the end of the day, when you, are, you want to see clinical implementations, there are some other major factors that may affect the, the, drug, the drug outcome like, or such as drug-drug interactions or clinical li limitations that are included in the, in the recommendations. So we want to develop a model in which uh, a regular doctor, when he decides to prescribe a, dra a drug, can check automatically what are the genetic recommendations, the drug-drug interactions and the clinical li uh, limitations like liver function, renal function, pregnancy, etc in order to choose the better drug combination for a given situation in a patient. Therefore, and the, 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 the fourth issue, to check in real time if for a given patient in a moment, all those factors 
it is impossible without without a computer supporting tool. So we decided to develop a clinical decision supporting system that may check in an, with an algorithm all these factors and give a recommendation to a doctor in the, at the moment of the of the drug prescription. So the model is preemptive and the the last the last characteristics of the model that I as I mentioned before it, we need to evaluate this this model in in terms of uh, of, of clinical daily use. Next one, please. Yeah, next one. Oh, OK, this is a model, so very colorful, as you can see. So in the center, you are you have what we call POPs personalized prescription system that it is it will be that this will be open for companies to help us with that this model will check by the time of the prescription automatically what are the personal and family record about that treatments and adrs about drug reactions that we have in the medical record secondly what are the clinical conditions such as liver renal function function pregnancy etc and the analytics okay we have biochemistry hematology uh, oh sorry it is uh, spanish degree one and uh, it, it means all the electronic medical record data that could be needed to check in order to decide which drug is the best for these patients second database will be built up in terms of for checking drug drug interactions drug drug in terms of the genetic framework and of course drug herbal and some other therapeutic uh, products uh, that are frequently used in during in the real life the of course the, the the another database here in pink which is genetic biomarkers we will genotype the population and phenotype some of them with the plasma concentrations by following plasma concentration of drugs specifically psychiatric patients and the fourth one is a clinical evaluation. We want to do clinical evaluation during the, the whole process. Even we will open a competition for companies for using uh, Internet of Things. It means to check uh, advanced drug reaction during real life for people. Therefore, we open up a competition for companies that will come in a few months, two or three months, in which we want companies to help us one which call here challenge number one to be build up all the uh, uh, clinical decision supporting tools. Second, we want companies helping us with the lab analysis, developing a system that will include in the daily routine uh, clinical life, a system to genotype or phenotype patients. The third is to develop a system that will make clinical evaluation of patients and to connect all this information with the personalized prescription system in order to be able to decide during the time of prescription what is the better drug combination integrating all this information. Next one. This next, uh, okay. Here you have a summary. I mean, the clinical, the personalized oriented pres prescription system called POPs will include or check data from electronic or medical record drug drug interactions, genetic biomarkers and remote evaluation of ADRs. I mean, and in terms of competition for companies, it will be three, uh, three different type of uh, competitions. One is to develop, develop the personalized prescription system. Second, lab for genome and, ph and phenotyping. Fourth, clinical evaluation, evaluation, three, sorry. And the fourth one, we will de develop or we want to use this system also for to develop a, a specific clinical trial unit for patient stratification in cancer and some other and some other pathologies. Next one, please. Sorry, can you okay. conclude? OK, please? next one, please. Yeah, yeah, no, just just finishing. Next one. OK, so this is the system that we that we will implement it and we are next week we will start in 12 pilot departments it called neurology, uh, psychiatry, internal medicine, covering in the, fir in the first year 6,000 patients that will be, will be uh, genotype and evaluated over a year in order to be able to develop some, some data about the 
the practical use of that. And of course, we will be very happy to share all this data with a similar situation all over Europe. Thank you so much for that. You have my thanks email there lot. for me. Yeah. Yeah, thanks a lot, Adrian. Um, I hope you can stay till one because uh, I also have some questions for you. So I, I hope this is possible. For you. Thanks Thank you. a lot.